the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. It's funny, sometimes when I'm saying lines, I'll have a flashback to when I somehow remember learning it, when I was first learning that particular line. Most of my lines, um, I guess, I have learned around here. In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. It began with uh, learning the passion narrative for each Palm Sunday and I began with Luke in 2007 and after reciting Mark's passion on Palm Sunday 2009, I wanted to hold on to it. I didn't want to just let it go and I thought, well, I wonder if, uh, if I could learn the whole gospel because I, I knew that other people had, but if I could, then I wanted to share it. I didn't want to just keep it to myself. Uh, I knew that I wanted to be able to perform it. Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. And so that spring, 2009, I started with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I carried a copy of the page of the gospel that I was learning. It meant that as I, as I walked along, I could add another verse. You know, once I'd learned a paragraph, I could put the next sentence in there. Uh, and it was great. It was a great feeling to sort of see the gap diminishing between where I was and the beginning of chapter 14, which I already knew. And I knew right from the first that, uh, that if I did do it, it was going to be called Testament of a Naked Man because it just had to be because of that somewhat enigmatic and mischievous verse um, in chapter 14, where he says, um, a certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth and uh, they caught hold of him and he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Um, and it's, a, it's an arresting title, it's a somewhat mischievous title. Uh, it gives some people some problems. Some of the priests of churches where I performed it have had people phoning them up asking if there is any nudity involved. I'm not sure whether they're concerned or whether they're hopeful, but um, you know. <laughs> I've led a retreat on Mark's Gospel and John's Gospel and so during that retreat for the various sessions I recited bits from either one as appropriate. There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. That worked really well, and I'd quite like to do that more, is to, you know, begin to take the gospel and uh, use it in different settings in that way and use the, the storytelling nature of it. As of today, I've now done 28 public performances. Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him and they were all amazed and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey I think the last performance, which was at St. Clement's, that was actually a pretty good day. I, I was working in the morning and doing, you know, regular things, and then in the afternoon I was actually able to take it pretty easy. I like to get to wherever I'm um, performing the Gospel of Mark about an hour and a half before the um, actual start time, because that gives me a good hour to set up and get the props, you know, where I want them and get the, the stage, you know, as, as I have it. I, I have it more or less the same wherever I go, but every place is different. And although I have some minimal props I take with me, I tend to use whatever I find in place. In uh, Sapperton, I uh, did an outside performance 
Um, and uh, we had a portable speaker and we had some chairs set up and I performed it in the town square. One of the most memorable things was I started getting heckled. Um, when Jesus was casting out the, uh, well, before he cast out the Gerasene uh, demoniac, um, you know, when he gets to the bit, you know, whatever you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God, I adjure you by God, stop tormenting me. I started getting heckling from someone walking past because they didn't realize it was a performance. They thought I was some nutter raving in the town square, you know. <laughs> and fortunately, someone who was there, you know, organizing the event went and spoke to them and they explained that it was a, a performance. All the time that I've been learning and reciting and storytelling the Gospel of Mark, all sorts of other things that have been happening in my life as well. And they have um, had their effect on me, but their effect has somehow been combined with this um, becoming familiar with the Gospel of Mark. And so the story, the stripped down story of the Gospel of Mark, in so many ways, echoes and reflects me, my story. Um, and I remember some years ago, I saw the movie Jesus of Montreal. One of the things about that movie, which is about a group of actors performing a passion play, was the way that the story of the passion becomes entwined with their lives. And, and I feel that's how it is with me and the Gospel of Mark, that, you know, there are characters in Mark's Gospel who appear in my daily life um, and things that happen that somehow seem to be reflected in that Gospel. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight.